So in this video, I'm going to get uh, get on with the final part of the build, and that's the uh, the PA right here. So I've already tested to this point here, confirmed I've got uh, lower sideband suppression. Um, so I'll build this up now. I already have the um, the low pass filter installed here, so really I have to do this part here, and then I'll be done. I'll be uh, ready to uh, get this uh, radio on the air. So uh, anyway, I'll build this up and then we'll come back and uh, test the output. Okay, so I've uh, put together pretty much all of the, uh, of the PA with the exception of there's this two, uh, this two inductors in there, uh, L4 and L3. I haven't installed those just net. Um, no real uh, tricks in the build here. Make sure you get the orientations of the diodes correct, of course. So stripe, the stripes are marked on the uh, on the um, on the silk screen. Just one thing to to make sure though is this heat sink is connected to the collector of the transmitter, and it comes awful close to this resistor right here. So just make sure there's no uh, connectivity between. The metal heat sink and any of the other components on the uh, on the board. Um, you know, really, uh, you, you, this uh, the collector of this goes to you know this point right here. So you want to make sure that it uh, it's not going anywhere else. But anyway, that was the only trick in the build. So what I'll do next is put the two uh, uh, inductors on, and uh, we're getting. Pretty close to being complete here. So, so anyway, I'll come back uh, with that when those two inductors are on, and uh, we'll have a look at the board. Okay, so uh, now we have uh, L3 and L4 installed, um, and also I noticed that I'd uh, left out C14, so that's the filter cap on the uh, on the phase shift op amp. So I I put that in as well. Um, so w what we'll do now is just uh, check continuity on the L on L3 and L4, and then uh, and then we're kind of ready to test transmit. So let's uh, check continuity on L3, and there's two convenient test points right here and here. Sorry, there we go. So that's L3 is uh, has continuity. So let's move up to L4. Bear with. I'm just going to can up here. Okay, now for checking the other one's continuity, you want to go from this point right here on C20, and you can go to the uh, heat sink because that's connected to the collector. Um, so that basically checks the continuity of both those uh, toroids, so we're ready to move on to a transmit test. Okay, so the big moment. Um, so just to describe the test setup again, uh, obviously here's the phaser here. Now I've got the uh, it terminated into a 50 ohm load here, and then I'm tapping off that output and sending it off to to the oscilloscope. So I've got it all turned right down now. So let's just uh, zoom in on the oscilloscope so you can see that. Um, all right, let me hit the tune. And so you can see there, we've got a uh, 10 volt peak to peak signal coming out there. Now, as I said, I've got the, both the volume and this pot right here turned right down. So we've got a 10 volt uh, peak to peak signal coming out now. Let me uh, adjust that. Uh, got it. I'm adjusting this, uh, this pot out of, uh, out of the camera here. Let me, uh, let me get that in camera too, so you can see that. It's a little bit out of focus, but you can see it. So. Let me adjust it so clockwise increases the uh, the voltage on the pot there. So you can see we're up at 28, 30 volts peak to peak. We turn it off again. Turn it on, 36 volt peak to peak. So there's 41.2 volts peak to peak, which is around about uh, four watts, which is uh, what we're supposed to get out of the out of the radio. Um, so let me uh, now. Um, basically connect up the output to this little power meter that I have right here. I've used this uh, I've used this in some other in some other kits. Bear with me, I've just got to connect it through here. There's wires going everywhere. Now you can see it. So this uh, effectively 50 ohm terminates as well. So uh, let's turn it on and see what power we're getting out of that. 
3.8 watts. It's pretty good. Let me see if I can get it up to 4 watts. Bear with. Getting tuned. Turn it up a little bit, a little bit. There we go, 4 watts, which is the rated power of the, of the radio. So that's great. Um, basically, we have, uh, we have output here. You saw the sine wave. Uh, uh, now, obviously, it's not going to be like a CW pure sine wave. Uh, but uh, what, we'll do what I'll do now is I'll uh, put this on the, uh, the spectrum analyzer. What I'll do first is, before I do that, I do have a 50 uh, dB attenuator on the spectrum analyzer, but I'll turn the the output power right down to 0.1 of a watt just to keep things safe. Uh, bear with, oh, can't quite get it. Well, that's close enough. 0.1 of a watt there. So I'll uh, uh, reconnect this over to the uh, spectrum analyzer and we'll have a look at the, uh, the purity of the signal. Okay, so uh, I've got it connected through here over through to the spectrum analyzer again the power is way down and I also have just pan off to the right there this is a 50 dB attenuator uh, just to keep my uh, spectrum analyzer nice and safe there so let's uh, let's have a look at that signal so you can see there there's, there's some other harmonics creeping in there but here's the main signal now let's just go to that peak so a peak at minus two I mean, the number doesn't matter because I'm going through the, the, uh, the attenuator. Minus 22 dBm. And then if I go off to the, uh, I've got minus 58 dBm for the, up for the lower side band. And then just going to the right, minus 49 dBm for the, for the uh, carrier. So let's just go to the right peak. So minus 49, minus 22. So that's minus 27 dBms of, uh, atten atten dBs of attenuation there. So, uh, I mean, that's not bad. Um, obviously, it changes if I go to a different frequency. Let's just see the effect of that change. You can see that the lower sideband, now I'm up at 2 kilohertz, uh, is not quite as attenuated there. So if I go to the peak, uh, minus 22 dBms, and then go to that left peak, minus 49 dBm. So that's uh, minus... 27 dBm's of, uh, of attenuation. So that's not, that's not bad. Um, I think what I'll do is I will keep the, uh, as I'm doing some more testing, I'll keep around uh, 1500 hertz, and then we've got uh, quite a significant attenuation. Each division's 10 dBs, so we've got you know, 30 dBs down to the carrier, and then a further, almost 40 dBs down to the, uh, um, to the, uh, to, to the lower side band. So there you go. Um, what I'll do now is uh, I'm going to um, sort of package this up and uh, we'll get it on the air and we'll, uh, we'll uh, see if we can make some contacts. Okay, so I've got the uh, phaser on the air. As you can see, I've got the, uh, both the input and the output from the phaser connected all the way through to uh, the, he the combo headphone microphone jack on my computer. So just looking up uh, on WSJTX, we can see there's plenty of uh, activity going on. And if you look over on the right-hand side there, you'll see that I've uh, made my first contact on this uh, uh, using the phaser there. So there we go there. That The red is a response to a CQ, and uh, the first uh, respondent was WA4DT. So if you're out there, WA4DT, uh, Here's a wave at you. Um, so you can just see the uh, kind of the general conversation goes. I first call CQ and I pass my uh, zone out there. Well, first you over to the left here. You pick a, a free spot on the waterfall graph. That's uh, that's sort of etiquette. Pick a nice free spot on the graph. So I've picked this sort of open spot right here. You then um, call CQ. And uh, so here's the conversation starts with the CQ, and then you can see that uh, WA4DT responded and passed me their location. I respond to WA4DT, passing the, the received signal strength. WA4DT responds with their received signal strength, and then there's a Roger, 
and then 73 is the communication completes. So, uh, so that's the general uh, the, the, the chatter backwards and forth. You can see here I've got another one going with W0PZD, but for whatever reason, uh, he's not hearing my. Uh, what? There he's got a 73. So, this is the uh, this is basically uh, what FTA does is it keeps trying the conversation until it gets the right sequence. So you can see here. Uh, W0PZD responded with their location um, ultimately and then I responded a couple of times with the received signal strength and W0PZD obviously didn't hear that uh, and then ultimately I got a response back um, letting me know my their received signal strength uh, minus two so uh, so this is cool um, I've had uh, two QSOs now on FTA with uh, with the phaser, so obviously uh, everything's working. I did uh, check the output power um, just then; it was 4.1 watts. So uh, so cool. I'm uh, I'm happy with this. Let me just put myself back into calling CQ mode again. Um, it uh, the activity on the 20 meter bands picked up in the past. Uh, in the past half an hour or so, there wasn't much activity, and then uh, um, so let me just uh, th show you some other things that you're going to have to uh, adjust. Um, so obviously, the, the one of the key things to adjust, if you have a look at the input side, uh, is kind of as critical as the output side. Let me just pan over there. So you're going to have to figure out a sweet spot for the microphone volume. Uh, too loud and the signals come in distorted too too quiet and you won't get the signals at all so I had to adjust that backwards and forwards uh, uh, I mean obviously what it, your sweet spot will differ to mine uh, depends on the uh, kind of the microphone you're using and so on and so forth so anyway that is the uh, phaser build um, very happy with the kit um, you know, obviously there was my let me just halt TX here for the moment. Um, one of the things you, that can happen on uh, on uh, uh, FT8 is people who don't hear you, you know, start a conversation going. It's there's no malice or anything there. It's uh, you know, it, no one owns the frequency. That's the old ham radio thing. So uh, so anyway, if someone else is on the on the frequency, I generally just uh, stop doing whatever I'm doing. So uh, so anyway, back back to the kit itself. Uh, I mean, obviously, apart from the troubles I had at the uh, at the very beginning with the FST thirty two fifty seven, uh, it was a uh, it was quite a fun uh, and uh, and straightforward build. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I like how the uh, how the kits laid out. Very you know very um, very sort of uh, I would say simple construction, but very straightforward construction. Uh, and that was without reading the manual. So, uh, like I said, uh, I did uh, glance through the manual at very, very, very detailed. So, uh, so you know, definitely, definitely, um, building from the manual is uh, is something I would encourage uh, if it's your first time build. So, but other than that, um, what I might do is uh, is is do a separate video with the I, I did by the enclosure as I mentioned. Um, I might do a separate video, sort of with me putting together the enclosure. Uh, but for the moment, I think this is a wrap. Uh, I've got two QSOs on this, so uh, so very happy. Just feeling the the final. So here's the, the heat sink on the final. It's a little warm, not hot. Um, and that was after quite a few CQs. Um, so anyway, uh, that's the build. I uh, hope you enjoyed this series, and um, uh, uh, I'll catch you all later.